Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hyperloops 2020 podcast. You have us here, the Hyperloops, or minus one Bobby Sapphire, two Hyperloops, NJ Cuenca, and on sarcastic myself. NJ Cuenca, how you doing, baby? I'm doing all right. Still, uh, still not sick. I'm getting tested every week, and fuck you, coronavirus. Uh, yeah, not being sick is pretty good, right? Like, I don't know, I guess, where where we kind of draw the line. I don't know if that's ever good, right? Like, is there any any time you really want that? I'm going to go with no. Um, no, no one wants to be sick. It's just, it's, and I feel bad for everyone that's, you know, had a family member. And I've, I've had some friends that have been sick. And uh, thankfully, no one's been, like, really sick. But, yeah. like, my barber was telling me that his, like, business partner died. And I was like, holy crap. Oh, shit. I was like, this haircut just got too real. Too, too real. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, not go down the, the, the dark, the dark path right now. Cause you know, we're already in the dark world with the whole destiny shit. Right. Um, so depends on how you look at it. It might be, it might be the, uh, you know, in the new dawn. <laughs> I'm taking that Maybe. as a star Wars joke that I didn't know about. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know, man. I figured it was like a New Hopes or something. There's maybe some movie named something Dawn. Yeah, well, I mean, the dawn of a new era. Okay. That sort of thing. Got you, got you. I thought it was like some 10th Star Wars movie for a new saga or something. New trilogy. Um, but all right, so we have the update to the, uh, the balance that the uh, Renewed Hope uh, c- continuation committee did. Um, so we're going to kind of go over that today. Um, we're going to talk about like, uh, our thoughts on the decisions, thoughts on, I guess the non-decisions, um, go over restricted pairings for those of you that don't know, they are actually wiping out the, uh, restricted list and essentially making it a restricted pairing list. So they put cards together that are just too strong. Um, and you could have to pick one. Um, but we'll go over that a bit more. Um, some meta stuff and, uh, you know, just, just general life things like we like to do. And then, uh, no, NJ Quick is gonna 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 joke us at the end of this thing, and yep. uh, we're gonna know. do we're gonna do the the life pro tips and uh, questions and yeah, yeah it'll, it's uh, gonna be a fun podcast. Listen to the whole thing, all do of it. it, all at once on two times all, speed, <laughs> all three hours. As they look closely, is this three hours? <laughs> it's like no, this is like thirty. No, minutes. it won't. It won't. It won't or is it? Hours. Boom, boom, boom. We all don't right. know. We don't know. That's that is correct. I ramble, <laughs> you ramble. We'll be all right. We'll see what happens. Um, but all right. So getting back in, uh, they kind of talk a little bit about stuff. Um, they had to go in like to full length discussion on United because uh, the internet blew up on them, um, and they had to explain that. But the long story short is uh, United We Stand is banned. Um, they didn't feel that it required a ban. They wanted to make an adjustment. The dilemma was is that they didn't want to kind of touch any of the FFG cards. They were fine, you know, uh, putting stuff restricted. They're fine just banning things. But they didn't want to uh, make a like a, an errata because the thing is is that like not everyone's playing by this. But, you know, they have pull on the SW Destiny website. So the thing is is it gets too complicated and convoluted if you have two different versions of the same card. They can change the stuff they made all day, every day, and they don't kind of care if it messes someone up. Uh, I guess they care, but who knows. Um, but they don't want to mess with the other stuff, so instead of trying to make some adjustment to it that really wasn't going to be right, it was just better for them to ban it. Once they know that FFG is kind of not doing anything, then they could kind of have free reign to do stuff. But it, it, in general, in that regard, it's going to be a bit weird. Um, so what I would what I would think would occur is they would ban United We Stand, they would reprint it as some other card with whatever effect text that they wanted. And then from there, they can go and adjust things. Um, and like, they, I think they kind of mentioned that if they're not, then that's my expectation of what they would do. Cause there was some discussion on it in general, but uh Quinka, what do you think? United we stand requires a ban, no ban. I think that it doesn't, uh, but I think that it did need to be adjusted. And, but I'm not I'm not sad to see it get banned. It's it's weird. I, I've always been a big proponent of giving incentives to monocolored decks, mm-hmm. but this is just like one of those things where the intention is there, but 
it's just too broad. I would like to see like things like this for like kind of like a extremist campaign where it's specifically for each color. Mm -hmm. I think that that that's a little bit more interesting. Uh, having something that's like free, like straight up free, is just that that itself. I, I don't really like because it's it's like one of those things. Like if you're playing mono, this you're not going to play it because of United We Stand. Uh, you're going to play it because it's free. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a pairing that's really strong, like like Vader and uh, Malikos uh, chart, yeah. Uh, and it costs you get the free one. That's like great. And your dice are probably not going to get touched in the late game. Mm -hmm. And uh, or you're just going to have a Voltron and it's going to, they're going to have a really bad time. So yeah, uh, that's like my pretty, pretty much like my, my lukewarm take, which is pretty much that. I think that if they had bumped this up to like a one and a two, then you're like, okay, there's a real cost there. Mm hmm. Uh, and it's probably not good enough, honestly, like at that point, like for, for two, like maybe you, maybe you run, run it at two because the, that effect's really powerful. But like, I've played plenty of games where like, that doesn't do anything. Like it gets flipped and sure they get an extra die. Maybe they want to like fix this. So like it's free, but, uh, you can still, uh, they'll only get one die back. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, that's, that's my take on it. Well, the Wii Stand is the full untap if they touch your character die. You have to dump two and right. pitch two resources, but, like, uh, in general, that is a, a, a very strong effect because the whole late game, you're just going to be like, yeah, you can't touch my character die because if you if you mitigate it, like, you're you're getting ruined here now. Because, um, like, how often are we playing a bunch of cards late game? We're just like, nope, roll out immediately. Oh, you did it? Whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll essentially admiral my guy. Um it's like, oh, that's kind of scary. But um, yeah, no, I, I'm there with you. I think if we had zero cost m mitigation, um, I don't even think we would really care about United because we'd be like, okay, we dumped a card. We got rid of this thing. You got your die back. Cool. And then somewhere later, like we're good to go. If they didn't change it to the then effect. So the first die we mitigated had to get like it had to trigger off of it. And then like you forced it. It'd be like, okay, fine, whatever. But for the most part, it started to be used against decks where it's like, okay, oh, you're playing order 66. You mitigated one of my my one die. I'm not bringing it back because I'm just gonna hold this until you you cast Order sixty six. I mean execute Order sixty six. So it's like, oh, this is miserable. Um, right. Only got flee the scene. Yeah, we're not gonna allow that either. Now we're gonna roll these back in and have two actions. Um, so like I understand it. Um, it was a big thing for before where mono was just trash, and to try to get people to play mono, and it didn't do a good job of doing that. But post post rotation with kind of what they did and they gave cards for being mono is like, okay, you know, there's a bunch of cards for being mono. They don't really need this anymore. Um, but I was actually already like pretty much the entire time I was still trying to play like two and three color decks. So um, it, it really wasn't a, a, a massive differential to me, but it, I'll tell you this much. It, it does change the way I have removal. Um, I got to a point where I was running like bounty hunter masks and on guards or bounty hunter masks. If I don't have upgrades, um, you know, on guards, night hoods, to get single shields for zero because I felt like if I, I couldn't pay one to mitigate a die and have it come back, it would just be bad. So it was better to just get like the small incremental gains. Um, but yeah, so like now it's like, well, if I go rainbow, I can just play 12 or 13 mitigation cards. And unless you can action cheat, I don't care because I can just mitigate in theory any die I want to now um, without kind of that blowback. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes because the mono decks don't have that option. They don't have the removal for it. But, um, yeah, like, I understand it. I expect to see it back in some smaller form. Maybe, like, uh, power action. You know, if your die got mitigated during your opponent's last turn, you can roll it back in. And then this way your opponent can do it, you know, remove it again. But it stunk when you, like, removed a die and then it came out and that die killed the guy. And you're like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, but moving on, uh, we have adjustments to the, uh, restricted list. They pretty much got rid of it as a whole. Um, they wanted to switch it to the restricted pairings so that it wasn't kind of messing up deck building for stuff that just didn't make sense. Right. So like if you ran desperate measures, you could not run, uh, abandoned uh, refinery. Whereas realistically that got put on the list just to, uh, to prevent chopper from getting abuse on it. Um, so we'll go over the restricted pairings at some point, 
But they talked about that, and uh, you know, they more or less decided not to touch Fiber Sword. R two D two with three PO will get hit when we get to that stage. Um, but anything so far on that? Do you think the I said? Do you think the United change is going to affect the meta? Well, yeah. I mean, all the mono decks don't play it anymore, so uh, that I don't. I don't actually think that Vader. Uh, Vader with the. Um, I'm sorry. I just blanked on that guy's okay. name. Alcos. Malikos. Malikos. It's yeah, like Terran you. Malikos, I think. Malikos, yeah. So Vader Malikos, I just don't see as being uh, good enough uh, mm -hmm. without it because I think that was one of the big, like, scary things about that deck was, yeah, just being able to, you know, like, 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 sit on it until you basically force them to have to use like, you know, a, a one cost removal, mm -hmm. and that's just like so for free is just, you know, like you basically like make them discard a card and they lose a resource for free. And like, that's, that's like pretty, that's like really good for just like for free. And like right yeah. now, like being monocolored isn't that big of a deal because the card pool is so small. Mm -hmm. um, well, Wait. I mean, Go no, on. yeah, I was, I was going to say, I, I, so no, this is, this is my point. Like now the card pool is so small that like the incentive to play mono is like much lower now because you don't have United. So I think you'll see more uh, rainbow decks. But, mm -hmm. uh, I think that that deck is going to be going down. I think you'll see more. Uh, I think you'll see probably more of an uptick with Palp. I think that sort of. Uh, I think you'll see that a little bit more. Um, you, I don't think that. Well, the non the non extremist campaign uh, mono yellow decks, uh, which I don't know. I guess I guess you're probably uh, probably want that free free. Uh, Free deck building point right like that's gotta be ju that's pretty juicy and not for the six cards when when you could just play it and not shuffle any of those cards in it was like okay whatever i was still surprised they hit it knowing that mono yellow was doing nothing the entire time like i know they hit it because they were like well this wasn't the intent and it's like look man right no one gives a shit about the intent was it doing anything yes or no that's all i care about no it did nothing I then then leave it alone <laughs> I feel like Rebel and Act of Cruelty are like reasonable enough cards, but man, Disable is Disable is just like one of those cards, like horrible or like actually good. Yeah, uh, my Entourage got disabled many times. I played against a guy <laughs> who disabled my Entourage on two and on three. All right, <laughs> like that no, was miserable. Those cards aren't trash. They're, tra they're no trash cards. This, they're they're trash. Just, he removed your die for zero. That's good. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. <laughs> he lost an action in the process, to be fair, because I didn't have to activate and then lose my die. But, like, it was it was miserable. It was absolutely Sounds... miserable. I was like, okay, whatever guy. Um, but I think I, Active I Cruelty was very active... good. I lost to an Active Cruelty. Active yeah. Cruelty was very good. Yeah. Rebel required very specific stuff. Disable was, like, no one unless it made sense, right? Like, oh, I tapped your... Mer like, I guess if, if someone merchant freighted and you disabled it, this, this would have to be round two. It'd be like, oh, man. Like, really? I was like, yeah. Oh, I haven't played that much, and I've already gotten my Merchant Freighter disabled in round two. <laughs> yeah. Definitely has happened. Because, <laughs> like, that's the thing. They they can't... Um, they, it shuffles in after they already drew in Malt, so it's like, okay, whatever. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, they rotted Extremis campaign, in, uh, in case anyone was wondering. It, it Pretty much, if you don't shuffle the six in now, you're, you auto-lose the game. Uh, whereas before you could decide to not find them in your set aside zone because the, you could set, you could put cards in your set aside zone that were, um, that were like mentioned on another card. So you could just decide not to bring those cards and then be like, Oh, I can't find them. Oh, well, no drawback. And, uh, that was, that was a good time. It was like when, like those 30 minutes where selling Intel didn't need to actually find a detected card and you could just get a resource. It was a, it was a great time. And there's none of it was allowed. Uh, so re restricted pairs. How do you feel about restricted pairs compared to just having the list? I think you said you you're in favor of that. Uh, I understand the restricted pairs. I, I like it as far as opening up building um, because like it was just screwing up random stuff. Like you couldn't have abandoned refinery and resistance ring. And they had, they didn't care if those were together one bit. Um, so I, I love the, the theory behind the restricted pair listing. But I think there was a, a, a mess up. I think some mistakes were made. Um, so to talk about the restricted pair listing, 
uh, they adjusted it. So all the, the restricted cards are gone now. Now it's restricted pairs. R2 and 3PO can't be played together. Chopper and Abandoned Refinery can't be played together. Trandoshan Hunter and Face the Enemy cannot be played together. The last is No Answer and Resistance Ring cannot be played together. Um, so you may be wondering, well, that doesn't really sound like anything changed. You may not have noticed that Desperate Measures wasn't mentioned. You can now right. play Trandoshan Hunters with Desperate Measures again. Yeah. You can now play Face the Enemy with Desperate Measures again. Right, yeah. That's, that's the first thing. disturbing. Yeah, that's the thing that really jumped out at me as well, was just like, there's no Desperate Measures here. And uh, it didn't seem that like supports were, I guess... I guess Entourage is really good, right? So yeah. that's like the big support that like you really want to Desert Measures right now. And I haven't seen any Mega Blaster uh, decks, Mega Blaster Trooper decks. But that's the like the, the Mono Red deck runs that in, in Camino. Okay. Um, right. So well, like those are massive for them. And they've kind of opened up the freedom to run DM when we, we didn't have any support decks going. So like I understand opening it up. They don't want Trandoshans to have face the enemy, but giving Trandoshan... Uh, DM back is kind of a little rude. Um, so like Trandoshan Hunters are, were already excelled, like they excelled versus the support decks already. And I'd probably say it was often like a 70 30 in their favor, um, if not like 65 35. But because like it depends on how important your single guy was. Because once a Trandoshan died, that's when one life became rough for them. But having a DM to just no, that that Mega Blaster, no, that Entourage, no, get it out of here. Uh, oh, Merchant Freighter? Cool. Like, we're just going to set you back. Is like, And that's really disgusting. Um, I'm also like concerned that yellow-red villain decks are going to have DM plus face the enemy again. And uh, yeah, like those are just very strong cards. We'll see if that adjustment matters uh, whatsoever, but I, 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 I don't know. I don't like the way that they kind of did this. Um, they talked about the, the ban for United being that, you know, they didn't want to give that freebie um, to all the mono decks that are currently being played. Because uh, the decks that A couldn't run it, or if you had to play like the specific plot that still puts you in mono to fit, but you you were you were now mono versus mono and didn't have that, um, so they they banned it because they couldn't touch it. But it's like I don't know. For me, they they did some weird stuff, and I, I kind of ramble on. But the the issue is is that like R two D two and three PO, yes, they've been strong for forever. That's fine. I understand. They should have been hit. They should have been hit ages ago though. So like the current hit is kind of unjustified from the perspective that right now they're really not doing anything. Like, I play them because that, that's me, but, like, I, I could play them no matter what meta it was. Um, but, like, no one else is. So it's like, all right, if it's not a current problem, why hit it? And, like, the, the thought was that, well, we'll hit this now so that it's not a problem later. But you guys have free reign to hit it whenever. Can't you just leave it there and then hit it when it comes about? Ah, oh, we messed up. We made something that's broken with the droids. All right. Well, droids are on their strict list. Cool. Done. It didn't need to be right now. So what's your right. excuse? I think they might have just been on the, we're going to do this. We don't We don't want to have to do this all the time. They just want to have it like, oh, we'll do this every like what? Like every month or every two months or I don't know how long they're, how often they're going to update it as needed. Yeah. But it, like we have emergency erratas on stuff because they screwed up, right? We sure. could have an emergency ban. And the thing was, is like, all right, these cards are on the watch list because we're going to watch them to see if they're ridiculous. This this could have been banned before in theory. They could have just been like, yeah, this team's too bare, too like ridiculous. That 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 reasoning is like actual shit. Like whoever was just like, yeah, let's just write that. Okay, well, we just didn't want to deal with it anymore. It's like, okay. But then here's your question, Cuenca. Why is closing in not there? Oh, I hate playing against that card. <laughs> I think most, if not everybody, does. Like, it feels great when you're playing as it and you get to do it. It's, like, fantastic. It's oh, the... you can feel the misery <laughs> going through the tee. Like, we're not playing this game to make money. Like, I can feel the misery <laughs> for my opponent when they just... They're either, like, I can't activate or I have to give you money and not do anything else for the round. Mm -hmm. Or you're just like in a situation where like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep a range out and then we're going to pass and then you're just going to have your guy on. Or we're going to pass too and then we're going to go the next round and your guy didn't do anything. It's oh, yeah. Like, that, that, uh, that's the worst one, right? Like, so we get through round one and now the closing ends on the guy. 
So then if you pay me and then I activate, or sorry, not if you activate, if I, if I have Battlefield and I'm the person playing the closing in deck, I activate and find damage, you'd have to pay me. I smash you and put it back and then you have to pay me a second time. So it's like, oh, here's a four resource swing because I gave up my two and gave you two. And it's like, Jesus, like they would either need to give you like the action back so you could just give it and then activate. Um, that would probably be, have been like a, a reasonable concept, but like they can't just single touch the card because if they do anything besides ban it, it's the same concept as United. It's not their card. It's FFG's card. We didn't want to touch it because touching it or doing whatever just seems wrong. So like, yeah. what do you do? Well, what about bounty hunters? So it's like, well, sorry guys, <laughs> no one loves you enough. I think but, the fix is really easy there. Like have it come back exhausted. And that's I think that would be like fine. I mean, obviously the card's still stupid and I hate it, but um, that would make it that would eliminate that scenario, which I think is like the crippling. Uh, and I think it's exacerbated. You were talking about zero, not having enough zero cost mitigation. It exacerbates the whole issue, right? Because mm -hmm. you can't like be like, oh, I'll remove your die with nothing for nothing, and then you know it'll cost me something, but I can at least have my money to pay you. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna remove your die, and then I can't yeah. untap my guy. Not ready, can't, my guy. can't do anything <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's brutal but like for me it's just that weird situation because it's like we're watching droids we're concerned about droids droids not doing anything oh droids is banned because that's what this just the, the restricted pairing is a ban without like an actual ban so it's like okay right but yeah. you left closing in which actually sees play currently actually still pisses people off and it's like well we're gonna watch this and it's like I feel this like is people don't like R2 yeah. and C3PO for some reason. Sure, but people don't play it, right? Like it <laughs> Yeah. If a deck let's say a deck's absolutely broken, but literally no one plays it because it either hasn't been found or whatever, is it is it an actual in actuality broken? If a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, did it make a sound? Like <laughs> the question is, are you playing the deck and then you win the tournament, then yes. <laughs> yeah. But if like no one like that's the thing, is that it only takes one person to just like be like, all right, I'm gonna be the bad guy and just kill everyone with yeah. uh this you know but that's fine like i i understand the banning i i think that they should have been hit ages ago um and like i don't have a fault with that i have a fault with the reasoning which is just well we're concerned about it eventually being something so let's hit it now and it's like right. it's the i sorry the stupidest shit i've ever heard you guys like well i shit. will say i will say in their defense they did that uh with uh I think it was resistance ring and no answer. Like it wasn't that big of a, I think that wasn't that big of a deal. No, it was, there was something that they preemptively did something to mill because they were like, Oh, we're doing something to Trandoshans. Oh no. You know Resist resistance ring and no answer was absolutely ridiculous. They did something to Trandoshans no, at the same time. No, there was something, I can't remember what the decision was, but they did like a couple of things at once where yeah. it was like, maybe, it was, maybe it was the DM thing where they like, they were like, all right, we're going to restrict. Oh, yeah, they did stuff to, is it they did stuff to Mill and then they did stuff to DM because they were like, okay, now that Mill's gone. And I don't know. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm they, they did a trickle of stuff, but it was it was because each of those things was ridiculous. And what was going to happen is, is because they knocked out like two of the top three decks, the third one couldn't be left alone either, even though it saw right. lesser play than the other two. But it was it was much stronger than the rest of the available like available stuff. Right, that's um, a scenario. I just can't remember the specifics of yeah. like what the cards were. The resistance ring no answer thing was primarily bonkers because of stuff like Yoda. Like Legacy's Yoda did ridiculous things with the resistance ring. You can probably yeah, get away with honestly playing that now and 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 not being largely concerned. But they just they, I understand hitting that. It's just because you can do do dumb things. Um, the theory was is you bartering for a resource to uh, to draw. We both draw, and then you special chain into the resistance ring, and then you dump their hand. So it was just like, oh, that's disturbing. Or um, there was something insane. There was like a special, like, I think we like discard a card, so they get to one, and then you special into the resistance ring to to rip the hand. Or we did like silly shit off of like motivates and multiple resistance rings. I know I did some crazy stuff with Yoda Leia one time, and then just got like mud stomped by Chopper. Um, But yeah. So th those are restricted pairings we're seeing, and like I don't know, I think they freed DM a fair bit too early, um, but we'll kind of see what ends up happening there. Um, 
And I guess if DM's floating around with anything yellow, it's just like, all right, well, maybe yellow's super playable again, but it didn't touch mono yellow. So it's just kind of like yellow, red, yellow, blue, or rainbow. Yeah. Like gets access. So I'm fr- I'm loving I'm loving my boy Sentinel Messenger with a DM and face the enemy. I tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Right off the top, you got the Sentinel Messenger. What GG Jabba again? Or you go what? Yeah. So it's like oh, okay. you go you can go Forlom. I don't know if I want to play the Forlom version anymore. Like maybe I guess if you need damage to start, like that's fine. It just seems you get that's your blasters. Over. You get you get all you get a bunch of good cards. They get to play Patar, right? Like they're like oh Patar. How bad can it really be? That's the question. We'll find out. Can't. Yeah, we'll find. We'll find out. On How do you feel, Vibrosword? I'll say Vibrosword. I have no problems with them keeping it on. I, I think that those kind of cards are not that problematic. Like, like I don't think that like a one die three cost. Uh, Two three four. Like I get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's the thing is that it needs to be that good. Think about all the redeploys that we've had. Uh, three cost upgrades, like. This is, I think, this is actually like a sweet. Uh, I think this is actually like a card where it's like very powerful, but I don't think it's uh, the exchange of paying one to remove it is fine, and mm-hmm. that's what Destiny's all about. And I think that that's that's like a fine uh, for now. I mean, I, it depends on how dominant it is, but I, I think that you're. I think right now you definitely didn't need to touch it, and I think that you probably will see. I don't think you're going to see it, but I will say. That with DM not being there, I think there's going to be like this sort of like fake sort of like, oh, maybe because like Vibrosword and DM are now like available more so, uh, you know, then you might see that together and you'll see more Vibrosords and thus it might look like Vibrosword super dominant. But in reality, it might just be because DM is super dominant. Yeah, but I think those would have been played together anyways. So it's more that we'll see face the enemy in that pile. Yeah, but... Well, I think it just open it opens up uh it opens up yellow a little bit more. Uh just because you can you can play them together and you don't have to you don't have to choose if you're playing like red red yellow whether you have to play face the enemy uh or DM. Yeah. You know, but I guess what I'm saying is do you, like does this adjustment actually just open up yellow more cuz I feel like this didn't <clears throat> make an adjustment for yellow as much as just face the enemy plus DM. I mean Trandoshans, like you said, I think Trandoshans are better now. So. Yeah, but Trandoshans won't can't run Vibrosword. That's they're, true. they're not unique, so they, mean, it, they would be one, two, three. It, it'd be like okay, but they already had shift. That was one, two, three. Right, right, right. Yeah, I guess that's fair. That's a fair point. Yeah, like the uh, there's a three cost red card that's one, two, plus three, I think. And like it's Trandoshan, so you're going to have a base side, and they get a resource back when they do that one, and it has redeploy. And so is it one, two, three plus? plus they won't be able to do well? the plus the plus on Trandoshans because they don't have a melee. Oh yeah, side. because they're not. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, the other one has disrupt and single discard. They wouldn't have like the two discard discard side, but they'd actually be able to resolve all the stuff together. So, I still think you might find people playing Vibra Sword with Trandoshans. <laughs> might be wrong, but I'm gonna go with you wrong. Okay, go I might be one. wrong. Well, they have that. They have that. There's that red card, right? If you're playing like red, yellow, and if it's a uh, elite unique, then it gets redeploy. Is that? Yeah, that's works? the one I was talking about. I think it's uh, E eleven D or something like that. It it, it yeah. gets you a resource if they're non unique. Um, if they're elite, it gets redeploy. Yeah, that card's really good in that deck. Yeah, I I liked it a lot, but like people just don't play it. Um, it required more rerolling than you normally got. You did on Trand Oceans, but right. um, we'll kind of see how that goes. Because the issue is, is with with Anakin and uh, Vader still around. Like they can put they can put that eight damage in without kind of rolling partial or you needing to mitigate a lot of dice. So if they they smash a Trandoshan off the table, like the Trandoshan is having a major issue. Trandoshan prefers a a support format more. They can they can yep. just go in and have a field day. But uh, that that, yeah. Speaking of Anakin though, like that dude's not even on the watch list. <clears throat> yeah, that that was something I was surprised by. It's like okay. And then, like, this is when I get, like, offensive. Because the thing is, like, I the way I think is just really attack, attack, attack. And it's like, all right, so all these these things on the watch list, they listed ter- ter- uh, they, they listed Malakos as the watch list. But then Anakin's not on the watch list. And I was like, look, guys, like, this right here, everything I ever thought you did that was good, you threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Every- so 
I so right rude. out the window. You, <laughs> you took a shit on my lawn <laughs> and, then, and then like lit it on fire and burned my house down. That's what you, that's what well, happened. That's a, that's a, so that's the logic of like, Hold on, you cut out. I think we lost a Cuenca. He did. Probably got that recently. C three PO R two D two. I don't think uh I don't think Anakin's been that like super dominant either. Uh I'm here. So, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> so yeah, you your thing cut out and then right. came in. And you said like the the um same thing as C three PO R two D two, you don't feel like that deck's been super dominant. Um so it actually has been quite good. Um, the Elite Anakin, Elite Ahsoka, Youngling plus United deck has actually been very strong. Very, very strong. Like the uh, the list we were seeing in the Artificery you... Tarp Cut were two Luke decks, two of the Anakin deck, two Vader Malakos, and uh, two of the Mono Red deck. So like it, I could understand where they're focusing in on stuff, but I feel like... There, there's no real events, no huge events to really pull data from. They're seeing, you know, Vader win a bunch of stuff, and they're like, that's fine. But then they're, like, hitting a bunch of things all at once, and it's like, guys, what are you doing? Like, do it properly or don't do it at all. And, like, I, I'm really concerned that the people that are considering these things have no idea what the fuck they're doing from a competitive standpoint. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you can make that face. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I'm completely offensive about everything. Like... I can read Fair what enough. you write, oh, well, and if you write the way that you guys put this stuff out, you have no idea what you're doing. I will say, so one thing that it's interesting that I think one of the points that was made is that they don't want to, uh, they don't want to touch things that FFG has done, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then, like the, the restricted pairings is like brand new, uh, and I think that there's a, that's there's that's that's like a weird. It seems strange to me to sort of introduce a new concept like that, even though like it's the concept that hasn't wasn't an FFG idea, and I'm fine with it. But it's just it seems like the logic of like doing both, of doing what of doing something new and then not being like oh we don't want to do like you know and you you we've banned cards too so it's like yeah we the genie's out of the bottle like yeah one of the things that I was going to put I was going to talk about because uh, one of the topics was things that didn't happen. And they mentioned this about the uh, the costs, and uh, they've done a lot. So I understand not wanting to do too much at once, but uh, balance balance other characters that have not seen play. I've also been a fan of to see mm -hmm. to shake things up, and yeah. So that's one of the big things. I, I... yeah. So uh, you're cutting out again, but um, it's more that they. So I, I think it has more to do with the DB and the mod than like not physically I touching don't... FFG cards. Uh, if you want to say it again, you, right. you got cut uh, about like halfway through, I think. Um, around the time I started. Oh, I was going to you... say the only character. I would love to see. I'd love to see Mace as a 15. He might be too low as a 15, but uh, yeah. that, that's all I'm going to say. And yeah, I think your point about the, the DB, you'd mentioned that previously and I hadn't thought about that and how they can like, uh, change things around mm -hmm. um like uh you know like the balance is all official stuff that they've done so they just do that and it's locked in mm -hmm. i don't know if there's a different i don't know if there's a difference in um in infinite compared to standard where one character is a different cost i don't think so and nothing jumps to my mind I don't think so. I think usually when it was affected, it was affected in all formats. But in theory, yeah, there, there could be an adjustment where, like, you see the different character points based on the format they're in. Um, but right. I think that, like, it, that also gets messy because the, the, the issue can be, like, the mod. So, um, in general, yeah. they will go and touch a card um, that they made just to rata it. Almost have, like, no explanation because if you don't notice it, it's it's changed in the um, in the mod. And then, like, you're just kind of playing with it. Like, I, I was cheating my balls off with um, Cal Kestis' lightsaber because uh, in the – I think I want to say it was in the release event or at least before it. Uh, it said if this – that was it. If this die is not showing a damage side, then you can, like, roll the die into the pool 
So you could just play it, roll the die into the pool. All right, sorry, you roll a set-aside copy of the die in the pool. And then you could just activate the character and have two dice, two of them in the pool. Um, they adjusted it to those. If this die is showing a non-damage side. So now you have to actually see the capability of a non-damage side as opposed to before you just had to, like, it not be showing a damage side. So it, it didn't exist, therefore it's not showing a damage side, therefore you roll the die in. Um, and, like, they adjusted that, but there wasn't, like, any huge mention. So I was cheating for, like, three games on that. Had no idea. <laughs> Absolutely none. Um, but, so, like, I, I understand the comp set. They, they, can, they can just adjust their stuff. And, like, that all makes sense. I just, I, I think I just heavily disagree with, like, the wishy-washy way that they're picking to do stuff. Like, if stuff is just, you feel is too strong, then smash it to pieces all at once. But, like, don't be picking cards that are like, well, this might be strong, so let's hit it. And then there's other stuff like, like well, we, we know this is very strong, but we want to watch it a bit more. And it's like, they, those those are really, like, counterintuitive. Like, I feel like they're they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. I think someone someone over there doesn't like R2 and C3PO. Uh, no, I like, I understand it. They, they just don't have to deal with it. But, like, you, like, the claim of, well, we have to worry about what we're building in the background is like, no, you don't. You could just, like, literally throw out the research repairing when you launch mm -hmm. the new stuff. And just be like, surprise, hey, sorry, guys, we made some cards that were just going to be too good with them, so we we cut it down. Right. And it's like, okay, this makes sense. Like, anything that would make sense is, like, fine. And, like, I guess it's opinionated because it's, you know, makes sense to me. But, like, that shit's all contradictory. And they can go eat a, eat a sour lemon. <laughs> Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean that lemon up. Yeah. <laughs> Shine it up real good. And shove it straight up. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Currently, watch list they're talking about closing in. Um, Force Affinity, Camino Cloning Facility, Terran Malakos, and Unending, oh, Unending Hate and Vibrosword. Um, what are your thoughts on Force Affinity? Because we talked about closing in. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's another one of those cards that you were talking about, Anakin and mm -hmm. uh, doing well. And I mean, that card's just really good in that deck. And. Mm -hmm. Uh, on top of having United, I think you're going to see it be uh, not as good. Uh, but uh, I think that that deck is probably uh, legit as it, it uses all of his points. And uh, Force Affinity is gross. Uh, just having free cards and, and that deck has access to, you know, to free mitigation and uh, just free cards in general to take advantage of it. I, I think that card's like very, very strong and, and in build and, you know, it's just also very strong with i'd be i wouldn't be surprised if that card got like errated or changed in some way because yeah it just is like one of those things that it just seems it seemed like when i read it i was like this card just seems like too good yeah because it's like it's like a free roll like it's it's one of those things like it, it, it has the same pro problem as united where it it's kind of kind of free and it has a, it has an effect uh, that's super positive. So, um, the, the the downside of it is if you draw it late, it's not that great. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but early on, it's you know if you have three characters, it's ridiculous. That's my take on that. Yeah, I I agree on the so like going plus two cards in hand off of it is very strong. Um, but at the same time, like you have to build that specific deck. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. You also have to draw the card. So, like, you, you were forced into Apprentice Sith Jedi. You had to draw the card. You had to kind of not be staring down the barrel of Disrupt. Um, if the action pacing is is bad for you, then that's rough. The, usually the action pacing is not bad for you, but it could be. Um, I'd say kind of where the, the differential lies is probably around that either the, the, the gain resource or um, the Sith Deal 1, when you can do them both together. When you can, like get play play it get the resource back deal one and draw two or play it get the resource back and draw three is probably where it's going a little too deep um realistically if you needed to scale it back a little i'd say that turn the resource into a shield if it was get a shield and draw three i don't think you care um if it was get a shield deal one and draw draw two which is probably what would occur then I still don't think you care nearly as much. Like it's still good there, but it's harder to kind of get that going, and it's very more. It's like way more specific. Um, and I think at that point, like you're you're fine with it. But when you when it's draw two, 
get the resource back, deal one. It's like, oh, that that's probably bordering on the the way too strong. But like if you you can still dead the card, right? Like that's the issue. As soon as you kill like the the only Jedi for the the villain version, it's you know, pay one, draw one, deal one, and that's like miserable. So it's like, okay, like I I understand. Like it, I think it's fine. Um, it's a bit above curve, but I, I don't think you have to hit it. I think it's fine to give, you know, those decks like something to to enjoy, I guess. It's the the weird part with like the strength of it, I think, is just because it's mono blue. And mono blue is the only one that actually has like a full set of upgrades right now. Everyone else is kind of struggling to build those those upgrade suites or even like support suites um, for monos. Like the red one requires like your three guys being alive and it's awful when they're not. Um, and I, I, what is, do we have a yellow one that does anything? Uh, I can't really think about, I, I can't, I don't recall. I, I, I can't think of one that's like, oh, for each, oh, you know what the one we have? They have, um. For each of their yellow guys, you can play, I think, a weapon or equipment from the opponent's discard pile for one less. Oh, yeah. So, like, that one's just much worse because you have to rely on your opponent. Yeah, I think if you could pick yours or the opponent, then it's different. Because you could, like, dump the card to reroll and then, like, get it get it for cheap or free. And, like, then we're talking, like, crazy Vibrosword shit, right? Like, you're like, oh, this is Vibrosword. <laughs> like, reroll my yeah, dice. Plus three, plus three resources <laughs> is uh, pretty, pretty, well, is it? It costs plus two. one? It costs one. Plus two, yeah, it costs one. Okay, well, yeah. still, like... But your three-wide yellow. Can you even build a three-wide yellow deck that wasn't... Okay, Chirpa, never mind. We're going to take that all back. So, so like, that one scenario with, like, Chirpa, I guess. Because you get 14.3 yellow guys like that. But that still seems miserable. The Vibrosword won't even have, like, the pumps on those guys. So, it. I guess, I guess if you weren't Saw... Yeah, Saw, Chirpa, Ewok, with the second Ewok... And you got to play a, a viral sword for for the one on Saw would be miserable for people, but I think I'd be okay with that. It's Saw. Like I feel so bad to play in general. She got to say, man. I don't know. But um, have you played against Camino Cloning Facility yet? Uh, I don't think I have. No. Uh, it's it's really interesting from the mono red deck because. That thing is disgusting. Um, they'll pay the two, get a Imperial Death Trooper um, that mm -hmm. round, but they, you know, they have to get eleven counters on it, um, which is kind of interesting. From like, if that became really popular, then raiding parties can be really good because you're just stealing money from them. Like you're stealing resources off of it and slowing them down, but then making money. Um, but yeah, they they you know, Terran Malikos is on the watch list, and I'm just like, your guys are out of your mind. Um, unending hate, I can understand there. Like, they're concerned about it doing too much damage on the high end. That's, like, very irregular. Oh, I rolled out and hit four blanks. Well, you're going to go take five now. Like, sure. Put a, put a cap on it if you, you know, if there's a major concern there. But still feels fine. It has a requirement, um, which is, I think, Sith of Inc or Inquisitor. And then Vibra Sword, which is, like, the fairest of quote-unquote busted upgrades we've seen like chewbacca blaster is still better than that it just doesn't have redeploy so it's like uh you know okay but like vibra is just very good you want you need redeploys and we just kind of don't have those so vibra sword being in the redeploys like oh i hate playing against that card so it's like uh eh, it's, it's still got to get the three on that first round you still got to do stuff but um yeah Sorry, yeah, uh, white uh, screening, you guys. There's the the list, though. Yeah, I had this one game where like my opponent got to three, and I had an exhausted guy and a face of the enemy in my hand, mm -hmm. and I didn't play it, and I felt so stupid when he played a viral sword. I was like, God damn it! Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't care about entourage. You can have your own. oh no. I like I definitely cared more about the viral sword at that point because he Did put you get it like smashed? on an elite. Uh, I. I barely lost that game. Actually, it would, would have been very. It would have definitely. I definitely would have won it had I not had I done that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tis so. tis quanka tis tis. Yeah, I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> this man says as he like goes into events with random ass decks that end up being yeah, great exactly. later. Like that that tournament you played after and was like, what the hell is this shit? I was like, oh, this thing looks amazing. And this man's like, I'm gonna play Dooku Towson. Like, this is the this is the meta of Afra, and I built Afra, but I don't care. I'm gonna play Dooku Towson. 
Well, it's I like, just I didn't think I could beat Mill, and I was like, I knew I could beat Mill with Dugu Towson. Like, <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Got to make those reads. Yeah, I guess that that was the format where you're like, everyone's like, I got to beat Mill. So what happened? Mill got demolished, but then like Afro's like, we. Yeah, and they were like, they thought uh, uh, Arrowbrook thought that they had a good matchup against Mill, and I was like, are you playing against good players? Like, <laughs> I, it always feels miserable to me. But that... I'm also not very good, so. <laughs> i would just like lose that. my hand before i could do anything and not be able to re-roll and like rrr. i think your issue was you just didn't play enough so you just took too long and you just kept going to time i didn't go to time that long i, I feel like at the end of the uh, t- towards the towards the end of the uh the game i didn't go to time that often i feel like you I went to per- time in every best of three i've ever seen <laughs> no yeah that's that's not true you went to time Some in every best of three that went three games I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't know. it's possible. I mean, maybe, I, okay. Maybe I went to time, but I don't know. I think most of the time the games were decided not by, not by time, but they were decided in, in that, in that round. Fair enough. They were going to yeah. be over soon anyways. Yes. All right. Uh, any last parting thoughts on, um, I guess, any other effects on the meta you feel that are going to occur before we get to questions? Um, no, I can't, I can't really think of anything in, in particular. Honestly, I just, um, I'm glad that I'm glad that mono, I'm glad that United, I'm glad that United, I wish they had done something different, but I understand the ban and I think it will make things a little more, uh, a little more interesting. But I'm worried that maybe the mono decks are just now not going to be good. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I think yeah, I, th- I don't know. I still yeah, I feel like the mono decks are still going to be played, but it doesn't matter because I'm bringing in the new era, the era of the Jawa, in every deck that I play right now. There's a Jawa. That's not fair, man. That's <laughs> not fair. I started playing Jawa before you were playing Jawa. When did you start playing Jawa? I've been had played Jawa. When my grieve my grievous Jawa decks. When the hell did you have Grievous Jawa? I played Grievous Jawa, just trying to get stuff on him. And independently, I've been playing a Jawa deck until I showed it to you. And you're like, oh, yeah, I love Jawa. I've been playing Jawa. I was like, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that merchant freighter life, bro. It's because I had a whole yeah. deck of threes, and I was like, how do I get a resource? Jawa. <laughs> I was like, oh, let's go. All right. Uh, so I guess we'll just head over to podcast questions and uh, see what they got for heat for us. All right. Uh, so this first one hmm, comes from Ed, uh, Jedi Geek Girl, and it's it's a bit lengthy, but I'm just going to read it as is because I'll mess this up somewhere otherwise. Not to get too real world, but with the seemingly never ending real world bastard, that's COVID, continuing to cause havoc, should we assume that the final Star Wars Destiny Worlds and Wild Horizon are never going to happen? Is there a final line where FFG should cut their loss and move on, or would it be worth it to them to push these things to 2022, assuming things are not better? by fall 2021 eventually there has to be a point where they move on or just do things differently to send off star wars destiny right if so what is that point for them in the community for them not to do something or put out something out for an officially dead game thoughts Hmm. well so there's an interesting thing here because you mentioned this earlier about ffg losing the license Star Wars. Oh yeah, so we didn't mention this, but uh, the FFG no longer has the... They're no longer doing the miniatures portion for Asmodee. Um, Atomic Mass Games or Atomic Games is going to be doing that stuff now for like uh, all their Star Wars miniatures. So we don't know if in general FFG just doesn't have the Star Wars license for it anymore um, or if it's just going to be like the miniatures version, but FFG lost a bunch of stuff and I believe they've, they've been firing people. Um, rip our buddy. Matt Holland. My bees is yeah, it just wasn't supposed to be known. Very, very sad. So that that's the thing is that so is it that they still have card game uh rights or just they have no more Star Wars rights? Do we know the answer to that? No idea, but I don't think I cared anyways. Because I wasn't okay. playing a Star Wars game by FFG again. There's actually another question coming up by Jedi Geek Girl that if we get a Star Wars co-op LCG from FFG, but We'll talk about that in a second, but given her question, 
I would be surprised if there was a world by FFG at this point. I think that uh, enough time has passed where they're just not going to dedicate the resources, A, because they're not producing the game anymore, and B, because I think that there's a good chance that they'll lose that that side of the license too, or, uh, you know, they just they just don't want to have to, you know, kind of, they, they don't want to have to put the, put the show on. It would be such a kind of, it would be such a weird, weird feeling at this point, if you see, if you say, I'd imagine that at best, from my estimates that I've been reading about, at best there'll be a vaccine by mid-2021. Now, I don't think you would plan and if you could maybe plan FFG Worlds at the end of 2020, at the end of 2021, if that projection is accurate. But uh, I'm somewhat pessimistic that uh, there will, that everyone will be on board to adopt things. I, I I'm going to be following. Uh, you know, once there is a change in administration, I'll try. I'll I'll trust the administration that believes in science a little bit more than like the Trump administration, which would be like, here's a COVID test. Just, you know, drink this up. You'd be good to go. Uh, but now I'll, I'll look at like, you know, the, what the world is doing. And uh, if everyone's sort of on board, I'll take the poison with everyone else. Uh, <laughs> to just to, just to live a normal life, you know, I'll take the, I'll take the, the blue pill. Uh, so for the, reference, the... cause I've been following uh, Moderna and Pfizer in general over stocks for, for a while now. Um, so they, they, they're in the, the phase three of the trial. I think they said the timeline wise, we'd probably be looking at, uh, vaccines going out like April ish. Um, but that's not in like, Hey, we can give everyone to the, in the United States a vaccine. It's like they, they'll be, you know, rolling them out. It's obviously going to go out in like, you know, um, high priority people, medium, low or whatever. And it would take a while. Um, so like it. I don't know the specifics and whether they could like create manufacturing and blah, 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 and catch up. But, um, I, yeah, like that, that April ish 2021 is probably what you're looking for rollout for those, assuming that they continue to maintain their, their effectiveness ratings. And, you know, you know, all of a sudden we don't have zombies running around. No one grows like a, uh, an arm on their head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Radioactive yeah so I, I, right. Right. And I think that you could definitely see a, uh, community okay so i'll cover the whole i think i'd be sure i'd be surprised if we didn't get the other stuff the wild horizons uh i don't know when but i think they already have it made uh and um i would be surprised if they didn't do that i think that would be a really bad look for them if they were just like well you know what f all you fricks you're freaking fricks so that's uh I, I, that's a, that's my take on that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Just because everything got halted, it seemed like pretty fast. And if I'm not mistaken, they had most of their stuff done in China. I, I don't expect to get jack shit from them. But like I, I'm a I'm the type of person that will just be like, we will get absolutely nothing from them. So that if we do get something, it's like surprise, yay, positive. Not like, oh man, they're really not giving us anything. And then like you're just sad because you kind of expected mm. it. I just I rather believe that the world's going to treat us like trash. And then if we get right. anything, it's like a, a net positive, right? Like it's a positive gain. I think that you'll at least get the card spoiled and they'll be like, well, it's going to be another print and play thing. Sorry, we don't have dice. That uh, would be that. That's I. that's I. I think that's like the worst case scenario. I don't think they'll be like, we're going to throw these in the trash and bury it with with Matt. I, I expect them to bury it. Um, I don't expect us to get any of that. Um, so, yeah, I. I Sorry, FFG, I don't believe in you. You uh, you can prove me wrong as much as you want, but you got no trust from anyone in my uh, in my camp, who is just pretty much me, I think. <laughs> Maybe the Looper community will find out, but yeah. So <laughs> I I don't I don't I don't think anything will come out there um, whatsoever. Maybe we can get some leaks. Yeah, Jamingo was like, "Can we get Wild Horizon spoilers?" And I was like, "Yo, from who? Where <laughs> where are these coming from?" Uh, and he said, you guys, duh. it's like, sorry, bro. I, I don't know what you think of us, but they stopped giving us spoilers a real long time ago. Um, then 
All right, Atomisk S1. FFG announced it is out of the picture for its Star Wars miniature and RPG lines. Both have been handed off. So FFG sort of looks to me like it's being put out to pasture by Asmodee. Do you guys think this is the end of FFG? I'm going to assume FFG for Star Wars and not just the end of Fantasy Flight in general. I don't know. I have no idea about the differences in, like, you know, because obviously, like, if you... You know, if you have Star Wars, you can give a license to one person and then give a license to the other person and do different things, right? So mm-hmm. I could see them. I get it, there's a chance that FFG uh, could be combined into some other part of Asmodee and then they'll rebrand it as something else. I don't know. I mean, they do have FFG still does have Arkham Horror and they still have uh, L5R, I think. Yeah, and then uh, um, oh man, I'm gonna say Kaijudo, not Kaijudo, uh, Keyforge. Keyforge and those games are like they have a following. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the big problem with all those games is that you know coronavirus world. Like it's just gaming. Gaming in general is just uh, you know tabletop gaming is it's doing horrible right now. Duh. Yeah. And um, uh, you know obviously like you know, video games and online games are doing great because people are just you know at home. So uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll maybe Asmodee will. I could see Asmodee trying to like really try to get into that market more because you know you you we have these you know uh, forecasts for vaccines but you know there could something go wrong and zombies you know and like we're like well back to the drawing board and and the distribution of like is not just us in the united states it's also around the world like if pfizer or whoever has the vaccine the u.s is going to be in line with everyone else and china's got a lot of money too and they're going to be like, ah, yeah, here you go. I, I think they would like, have factories everywhere by that point, and the government would be, like, sprouting up stuff to, to get things handled. Yeah. Um, no, no, that's fair. But th- that's a whole separate ball game. But, yeah, it, it's it's <clears throat> the it's a, it's a new world, right? And I, I don't know. I don't see worlds happening for a lot of this stuff. We don't we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, I'd say it's the end of FFG for Star Wars, I'd assume. Like, the miniatures are gone, but they didn't have anything else going. They didn't have, like... Star Wars card game or LCG going, so them just mentioning miniature and RPG lines um, could make sense. Um, I don't know, because I, I assume the book stuff was RPG, so those are gone. But uh, question number two is, so the renewed, uh, a renewed hope banned United We Stand. However, it won't be a permanent banning. When it eventually returns, how would you like to see it fixed? Point increased, reworked ability, or what? Um... I like the point increase one and two. I think that's pretty easy. I think you also, you mentioned not to steer thunder was the making it, uh, it had to pop. Mm -hmm. So first side have to pop. Yep. Um, Um, I don't know. I don't, I still don't know. Like, I think that like with a bigger, with a bigger card pool, right. Like giving you more of an incentive to play mono is like more important. Right. Because like you have you can play rainbow now and like you have six sets instead of like you know well we have six sets now but we have like nine sets. We only have four right now. Only four. Yeah, no. convergence, spark, covert missions, and then faltering allegiances. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, we have one block and then the new set. We had six before the rotation. No, Wait. we have Convergence, Allies... No, oh, Allies, okay. Allies is not a set. Allies is just a little dinky starter thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm talking about the dinky stuff, too. Okay, so oh. you have you have, you have have three sets, and then you have dinky, three dinky things, right? Uh, two dinky things and a Faltering Allegiances. You have the starters, and you have um, Allies and Necessity. Yeah, the yeah, starters yeah. count as Convergence block. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's where I got. I was like, oh, we have six things, but three of them are big blocks. So once we have six, six, uh, six sets and a few other dinky things thrown in there... Um, uh, then you'll rainbow will definitely be way better because you know you have so, so many more cards to draw from, and I think returning faithful, sorry, united back into the fray uh, will be fine. I, I also like I also like the fact I also like uh, changing it to uh, just one die instead of like neutering multi die sort of things. Are you so adjusting it so it would have to remove itself to pull the die back. Um... Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think power action um, to reduce the timing of it. Power action. Solid. Uh, the other one is, is um, uh, put a resource cost. 
pay a resource to to bring the die back. Um, then this way, if it's multiple dice, you're paying a resource for each. That doesn't feel nearly as bad. They can't do it if they're broke. Um, and they'd have to be paying one to, to get the die back that was, you know, quote unquote important. And that evens out because you pay one to try to mitigate it and they'd have to pay one to keep it around. And like, then the, then it's fair, right? Like, and, and I think that's like the big thing is you having to pay one from the beginning was awful. And then, you know, pay another one later if they didn't already smash you with it. But yeah, but I think the more sets it feels, it feels less because you'll have more zero cost mitigation. Yeah. It won't feel as big of a cost, but right now it's like a pretty yeah. big cost. Yeah. Huge cost right now. I think also like with more sets, it becomes easier to actually run mono because you're, you don't have as many holes. So like right now, every mono deck has a bunch of holes somewhere. Like there's just, you know, mono blue has the least holes because they have an upgrade suite. So you can build an entire deck around that. Like their removal is okay. Um, even the villain, which doesn't have nearly as much removal is like in a solid spot. Um, but like two more sets in, they could have legitimate removal at the same time. And it makes it much easier to actually just plop that in and, and go mono every time. If that protection is that strong. Also your characters would, you would have more characters to choose from to fit that stuff in. Um, but all right. Uh, another question from Jetta geek girl. When, cause I truly do think it is a matter of when, not if we get a star Wars co-op LCG from FFG, would you play? This question is more for NJ Cuenca because the honestly sarcastic does not strike me as someone who would really get into a co-op game. <laughs> I'm going to answer this one first. You are damn right. I'm not playing no stinking co-op game. I don't know. We ain't got no stinking co-op games. Yeah, Let's I, win together, guys. I, Care Bear Stare. You know, I would, I, would, I would play, you know. I like board games. Uh, I'm a board game person. Uh, I just don't have, it's funny. I don't have a lot of friends that play board games until I go to like conventions and then I'm sort of with friends and, you know, it's not to say I don't have friends that like to play board games, but it's just, I, it's hard to get a lot of people together to play board games. If that makes sense. Like I have friends that like to play board games, but they're like here and here and here. Uh, so in conventions, when they all get together, it's like easier to play something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea um, something I would consider playing the the Marvel game that they have. Mm -hmm. If 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 the tour like in a tournament setting, if the tournaments were like, if they had sort of like, I don't know, like a like a like a format that I thought was kind of interesting and cool. I thought that's something they could do. Uh, and I don't know what they do with Arkham Horror, um, but it was basically like, oh, they give you like a, you have like your team of people that you come with, you know, like three or four people. And then they like, they have like, they, it's like the release event for like the new boss. Mm -hmm. And then you have to like, all right, now you have to figure out how to beat the boss. And, you know, depending on when it is, you can, there'll be spoilers and you'll know, and then you can like test out against it. And then when you go to the tournament, you try to beat it. I don't know. Just something like that would be kind of unique and interesting. Uh, but uh, I would play. Sure. Yeah. I know at Gen Con. Um, when they had the Arkham Horror, what it is is uh, I think everyone was playing against, um, I guess, like the big baddie at the same time. So there was like mm -hmm. a progressive, either either progressive, like, the, you know, it had a number of phases and you're doing whatever stuff to beat those phases. Um, or like each individual is playing and like they all beat it. You get like you get prizes or whatever for it. But I, I think um, I remember them shouting like in happiness when they like successfully beat it. Um, so I think they had to beat it like all together or whatever, like decrease strength altogether, even though there's a bunch of people on separate games. So there, there's some weird system for it. Um, but it's less like, you know, us versus them. And like, it's us all together versus the mega boss. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, happy go lucky like that. No, 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 no. I like, I, I don't want to believe in teammates. I don't want to believe in like other groups. Nope. Me versus the world. Let's go. <laughs> you got nothing to say there quinker did you die <laughs> i mean no i i mean what am i gonna say yeah uh, i mean i generally don't like i like team sports you know like basketball i'm really into basketball but card games uh one of the things that i don't like about multiplayer games and board games in general is just they takes unless everyone knows how to play it takes so long to play a game i love like like 50 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour, hour and a half is tops what I want to play. And I just feel like so many of these board games just take forever. Yeah. And I think it's part of partly me. I'm very slow. 
and I hate making mistakes, so I just like I like tank on every decision. <laughs> so if I'm like playing a board game, I probably haven't played it a lot, and I need to be thinking about it on the spot. I'm like ah, just like ah, and then I put the card down. I'm like no, and, and you know we get into that whole thing. And yeah, I hate card games because I feel like I'm playing everyone's everyone's position at the same time. Because it's like I want to play an extra hard. All right, we got to play this proper guys, and it's like no, what are you doing over there? No, no, go up two, left one. You move like a knight. Yeah. Get out of here. And it's like, I, yeah, I don't want to deal with say, this shit. I would say that's another thing is is just there's always like one person who knows the strat. Uh, so usually the dynamic there is weird. Like you said, like every, one guy is just like, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And like, it's it's good when like you have someone, basically everyone knows what they're doing or, you know, everyone doesn't know what they're doing. And they're just like, ah, I'll just throw some cards out. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. So. Yeah. None of that sounds fun to me. That's all sounds like miserable, miserable shit. And also the co-op game would have to be good, right? Like I'm not going to yeah. play just because it's Star Wars. It would need to be kind of interesting. I don't really know what it would look like, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. So David Cole comes in. I'm butthurt that they restricted R2 without any data that he was dominating the current meta. Why shouldn't I be Or Why is it okay that they restricted R2 so preemptively? He's the man of the people. Man of my yeah. people. <laughs> You can you can take that one. I'm also butthurt. Um, all right. So they decided to make a decision. I don't fault them there. I think the decision was, would it be okay if they ass-blasted like everything else in the process. Anything that was just like ridiculously uh, too good. Oh, Trendash has been good for too long. Let's hit it. Um, Anakin. Closing, closing has been in, good for too long. Know. Let's hit it. Anakin. Anakin, we don't like. I, I'm actually fine if Anakin was on the watch list. Like, I could understand that because they're like, well, we're concerned about this. It's the fact that he dodged everything. What did this man do to dodge everything? He's so sexy. I, <laughs> him, he's a he's like, I got four for ones, and I do the whole Sith thing with the Force affinity. Like, how, how did he dodge this? But Tarek Malakos is on the list. Like, that's the one that boggles my mind. Like, the Malakos thing is probably the one that. The, like there was the art, there's the R two ban, and then closing in's watch listed, and then there's Tarek Malakos is watch listed, and Anakin's not watch listed. Like those two sets of things are like what started my crazy rant. It just doesn't make any actual sense. Well, like Tarek Vader's very good. Okay, that deck's very good. Sure. Why is so? Why is Malakos on the watch list instead of this deck is on the watch list? What does this guy do that you guys think is amazing? Because that's what concerns me. It's like, oh, well, he has really good die sides. Like, man, have you read his die sides? That shit's awful. <laughs> like, it's like he's got a resource. He's got a two melee. And after that, he's trash. It's, it's shield discard and two for one. I don't know about you, but Chewbacca has a two for one. You ever seen happy about that one? I haven't. It's like, go away, guys. Like, whoever's doing this, I... I would like punch you in the internet face for this. Like, get out of here. He's got two abilities. Two really. He does good have abilities. two abilities. His abilities are good. Yeah. But it requires pretty much be. mono or what little dinky blue guy to blank a die, which is like solid. It is not a world beater. And then the the pay the pay one to deal two. That is like even costed, but. It still only happens 70% of the time, assuming no dies in the pool. Because if a shield's in there, he can't do it. If he hits his shield, he can't do it. So if he picks up an upgrade with a shield die, which a lot of blue dice have, he can't do it. And it's like, yeah. so like, that's where I'm like, all right, this is, this is, this is fine. Like the pay one for two is already fine. Cause that means they can't, they can't set up a board state as easily. Like if they gave up another die to deal that too, it was like it was almost like a, a pseudo focus. But they had to give right. up a resource. You had to have the resource in order to do it. You had to not hit the shield. There had to be no shield in the pool. There was like enough restrictions where I felt like it's fine. And it's just like, no guys. Like Anakin will take one to do two. He doesn't he doesn't need to pay. He's just like, I'm gonna take one. Taking one damage is far less than paying one resource. And it's like, what are you doing? This guy has a four for one. You know what's good? A four for one. You know what's not good? A two for one. <laughs> the discard turned into a one, and the two for one turned into a four for one. And it's like, oh, look, Anakin. He costs one more point. Well, Malakos is OP. 
what crackhead shit are you on and can I have some? <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want any of that. No, I, I, it's selling. Only it's the good stuff, apparently. Do drugs. It's the good stuff. <laughs> Only losers do drugs. Come on. Dare to be different. Do we have children that listen to this? Because I feel like we don't. I'm pretty sure we put that this we is rated don't. R. We don't. There's, there's a I'm reason... actually doing meth. When I, whenever I go off screen, I'm just doing a little, <laughs> little hit of my crack pipe. <laughs> It's the it's the Yoda behind you. It's that's why it has a mask. It's, yeah, it's an entire it has a mask system. Cause I, yeah, because I smoke so much crack. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so yeah, I, I like. I I understand the restrict. I think the restrict in general is fine. I think it was preemptive, and it shouldn't have happened without the other stuff also being hit. Because they could have just let the meta shake out a bit to see what happens. I still don't think we would see it a ton with what they hit. But whatever. Oh, what? What's hilarious here? I just noticed is that the C three PO is still balanced in nine eleven with this. Yeah, <laughs> which I think is. <laughs> well, to be fair, um, if you don't keep him balanced, you'd have Elite Luke, Elite three PO. Do you want to play against Pretty that good. shit? No. No, he would easily take over K two SO spot. Easily. He would just make money and like to do disturbing, disturbing things. So like, I understand that. I, I, I don't fault it. But uh, with R2 and C3PO not being able to be played together anymore, what is the best pairing for each of them? Um, I was actually looking ahead and just thinking about it. And I think uh, I think R2 with Chopper is probably good with something. Although I don't know off the top of my head who the third droid to the party is. or I don't think there is a droid you can play, so it'd have to be something else. Maybe there's some like weird thing you can do with like Anakin, like a one die Anakin and some droids. Um, there's uh, also um, you can do Jin Urso with Elite uh, Elite C3PO, and that that gives you uh, access to the her two. You mean Elite R2? Yeah, Elite. Sorry, yeah, Elite R2. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been able to do these the entire time, so I would say. Where it would probably come up is that you can now run Chopper and 3PO again. Um, so you could see some some salvage standy things going on there. Um, you could go like Elite Chopper, Elite 3PO, and like Grease or something. Um, the, the the 11 on 3PO is just kind of there. Like, I, I don't think that really made any adjustments to any decks that they were playable in. And you just kind of didn't see them for a reason. There, there's not a lot of good going on. Uh, that they can get, like, real abuse for. Um, there could be, like, an Elisa Teen, 3PO, and a 12-point somebody else deck. Um, you know, Canon Jairus or something like that. Like, I, I, I don't know, but, like, it would have been stuff we kind of would have already seen already. Um, oh, uh, actually, you know where you're probably... You might potentially see it is a, a mill deck. Because uh, you couldn't 3PO and no answer for a long time. So uh, you can do that again now. And, like, th those are the only things I can I can really kind of fathom. Um, coming out of out of nowhere, I'd like I'd like to see a, an R two and a three PO support, so that we can still use them and get their abilities. Um, but I don't foresee that happening either. The the hatred apparently runs thick in their blood. So yeah, I, I, I got nothing for you as far as like what's the best anything for this. Um, yeah, I was just naming yeah. things. So obviously, I think things that maybe you could have done before might be maybe better now. But I, you're right about the C-3PO with uh, Chopper is something you can do now. Yeah. 11-11, you get an 8. Like, you could technically do... Um, oh, no, because 3PO's 9 there. Ugh. I was going to say Kashyyyk Warrior and, like, Valor's Tribe, but, like, that actually doesn't fit. You could do that with R2. You go one die R2, one die Kashyyyk, Elite Chopper, Valor's Tribe, Kashyyyk Warrior. But that also just seems miserable because those die sides are awful. Here's a bunch of ones. Um, Die by paper cuts. Yeah, we are actually out of questions. The last one was just a comment. They just need to see what deck Joe picks first, then restrict all the characters to get ahead of it. Otherwise, they'll always lag behind the meta. It's like, respectable. I believe in this theory. Well, you got to ban Jawa. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, if Jawa got banned, that, that totally would be. <laughs> Dude, I've been playing everything Jawa. You guys will get the article soon. But I've been all about that Jawa life. You guys have no idea. No, not for Jawas. Go home. You're drunk. 
Just one. One Jawa. Jawa mill. One Jawa to save them all. One Jawa to rule the world. It's really just because I want to play Merchant Freighter for free on round one and then uh, get three resources and play silly things. Like my Vibro Sword. My sexy Vibro Sword. Mm-hmm. All right, Quinka. What do you got for us? Life pro tip. Oh, life pro tip. Well, uh, I did this recently, and this might not be something that uh, for people who've done this, it's going to be like really obvious, but for people who haven't, it's life changing. And I'm here to tell you about my Lord and savior slippers with inserts in them. You get slippers and you put more comfortable inserts in them because a lot of times slippers have, you know, they have like their little foam and Mm -hmm. then like, it wears over time. But if you get a nice squishy, soft, like Dr. Scholl's insert and put it inside and you're wearing socks, it's like, it's heaven. It's so, it's a huge, it's a very huge moment. Uh, and uh, I recommend it for everyone because uh, uh, my my wife was on my in my slippers and I hadn't even thought of it. She's like, oh, this is like, there's not a lot of like padding here. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to put a little, little insert in there, you know? It's, Cause it's like it's fuzzy, you know. Like my slippers have like that fu- that that fur, you know. And it's like it seems kind of weird to put in an insert there. And like a lot of times you're barefoot, but if you have socks, you don't feel like that weird uh, texture of whatever insert you have. But yeah, it's a uh, it's really nice. Hmm. Joe's like, what? <laughs> I did not expect that one. That's right. I I didn't. I didn't. Um. <laughs> I don't do you really... have a go ahead? Do you have sorry, you, you, you can comment on my No, 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 no. I, I didn't have a comment there. I was gonna be like, I don't really have a life pro tip. Um, but I, I guess if it had to be something, it would be um if you if you really want to do something, um just start it. You don't have to like consider about finishing it or doing any other stuff, just start it. Uh very often in life, uh <laughs> we fail to get stuff accomplished because we talk about doing it and think about doing it, but we would never just actually go and do it. You know, uh, you want to start, like you got to fix something in your house. Just go and start it. Physically start it. Go grab the tools. Go, go, go literally start. You'll find out you don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Mm-hmm. Or you just, you never did it properly or whatever, but you'll pull out YouTube and you'll try to get it done. Just get started. Don't think infinitely far ahead about the setup and the complications just go get started, and uh, you'll probably finish it at some point. That's all do I got. Or do, do or do not. There is no try. Exactly. <laughs> now we just need the Yoda head. Do or do not. There is no try. All there right. You you, even you know that one. <laughs> I do know that one. That was actually our, our coaching thing, I think, <laughs> at one point. There is yeah, no try. Uh, all right, jokes. Do you have a joke? Only right, FFG in the stupid ARH standard format list. <laughs> the best joke of them all. Um, well, I'd like to say that everyone should blame Lucas for all this. And I'm not talking about George Lucas. I'm talking about Lucas Litzinger. Oh, I'm gonna his last... Litzinger, <laughs> yeah. I was going to butcher his last name. I was going to be like, Licks, Lick, brother. <laughs> Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein, hey. He's a good philosopher. Very dense, but good. But anyways, there's a... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, here's my joke. So I do have a joke. And I wrote it down so I wouldn't mess it up. God damn, do I always mess up these jokes. <laughs> uh, okay, here it is. And I might have... Okay, so this is my caveat. I hope I didn't say this already. I only have so many jokes that I've done. And I go back... I fall back on the ones that I haven't done. Anyways... Uh, Joe said I hadn't done this one. So here, here it is. Uh, so, Joe, uh, what's someone from Israel's favorite kind of martial arts? I don't know, Cuenca. What is it? Jiu-jitsu. Joe's face. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. I finally got him. I don't, know, I don't know if it's because... If that's funny or if the fact that that just came out and I'm like, fucking Cuenca, fucking Cuenca. It's like, 
when you do a Hitler joke and I'm like, did he just go that far? Holy no. shit. All right. So this is a Jew joke that's not offensive. It's a, actually just a pun. <laughs> it's a pun. on you know. Hands off, baby. Uh, hands off. You can send yeah, all that hate mail to the hyperloops at gmail.com. Yeah, if anyone actually has a problem with that joke, they can eat it because it's just a pun. It ha- it's not like a, like a, I don't even know, some kind of weird offensive Jew joke. Jiu-jitsu. Uh, Jiu-jitsu is not offensive. Here's <laughs> another joke. What do you call someone from Israel? No, sorry. <laughs> I messed up. What is... <laughs> not getting that edited out. <laughs> what, um... <clears throat> Here's one. What do you? What is someone from Israel's that lives in Rio de Janeiro's favorite martial arts? Brazilian jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm done, guys. That's it. We're done. He's been figured out. We got him. The game is a foot. The game right. is a foot. This was not a setup. I didn't know, but didn't it was know, just too like, easy. I mean, that's a, that's an easy one. It was too easy. And <laughs> on like that note, one. we're going to call it a wrap. Any I'm last thoughts, Cuenca? All right. I don't know. I need to... All right. No, <laughs> I got man. nothing. You got, the, you got the floor, baby. As long as you're not no, I don't about... got. I got Jesus. nothing. I really don't have anything. I think that uh, <laughs> I've told my best jokes, and I'm having a hard time coming up with jokes that I've written uh, every week. So hopefully next week or next, you know, year. three or four or five year, whatever. <laughs> Hopefully we'll do, no, we'll try to, I definitely, I vow to have another podcast before the end of the year, at least one. Yeah. Another podcast is fine. We're going to have to come back after like whoever comes out and talks trash about my hatred for the ARH thing, but we'll, see, we'll see what happens. But on that note, thanks for listening guys. This is the Hyperloops and have a good one. Deuces.